rights, filed the first habeas corpus case in Guantanamo. We've represented a number of the men. Uh, the problem is that the people that were put in Guantanamo, the people that were put in Abu Ghraib, overwhelmingly, by and large, were people that had no connection to terrorist activity. And we've spent eight years now having the same discussion. We've been up to the Supreme Court three or four times. We've won virtually every time that we've been in the Supreme Court on this case as yet, and still we're trying to do a post hoc rationalization for why an abomination like Guantanamo should exist. Um, I want to throw it out to you and give you a very qu quick chance to respond, but I do want to get to the next piece. Yeah, I happen to think that a, that a Guantanamo, the whole Guantanamo debate right now is wrapped up in this distorted abuse debate that goes on in the country. Has America abused and tortured people? Of course it has. In, in the context of the war that America is fighting, there has to be a solution for where it is that you detain the hardest of criminals that we capture or the combatants that we capture on the battlefield and detain them somewhere. International and national law is very complex and bringing them back into the United States, I think we have faced over the last few years the reality of how difficult a challenge it is to sort through those laws. So a Guantanamo type construct is right for the country, for the war effort, and it's got to be under the right controls, under the right supervision, under the right checks and balances. Our nation has been built from its inception on having the right mechanisms to uh, control all of the different elements of power that we have. We have failed miserably. Uh, the Congress has the ability to do that by controlling the purse strings, but yet they continue to fund these types of operations. Uh, the judicial has the same responsibilities and abilities to control, but yet across the board we keep pointing the finger at everybody and we wind up in this deliberative mode now for six years, seven years. The, 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 I'm going I'm to kick it over to Ron, but I do have to say um, I completely disagree with you on, on the Guantanamo. <laughs> Which is why Look, we're here. We, we, are, we are trying to, we are trying to. I completely disagree with you on the Guantanamo piece. There is no, uh, first of all, international law is not that difficult if people actually follow it. International law and, and, and is frankly, useless frankly, and determined. No, international law is absolutely why we're here. In fact, you know, when the Center for Constitutional <laughs> Rights would put out FOIA requests as to why people were be, being detained in, um, in, in the manner that they were, the Department of Defense, in response to the Freedom of Information Act request, would send us copies of the Geneva Convention. I mean, it's absurd. I want to kick this over to Ron, and I think we can pick this up in the next, in the next piece. And we're going to have a very, trust me, General, a lively discussion uh, about this as we, as we move on. Um, but in terms of our better angels, uh, Ron, can you take us into the next piece? Well, let me just say this about that in international law. <laughs> the fact is international law often had coherence because the United States led the right. world. That's right. And the fact is as soon as we backed off from that, everyone flew in every direction. The fact is, I think Vince is right. International law is fairly succinct on most of these issues. Having said that, I'm now going to move on. <laughs> they have, international law has failed miserably in the CIA contractor debate. That's there is no the definition of mercenaries. No, well, we don't the government there is no definition it. for how, you, how do you define involvement in military activities. It's not an international law. Let's we, have, we have debated that internally when I was in uniform and external. Well, Blackwater, they're arguably enemy combatants. I mean, that, that should be shipped to Guantanamo by other they countries. They should be. And, the, and the America, America should lead the international community in making sure yes. that we can define Absolutely. what yes. mercenaries are, that we can define what involvement in military activities are, so All that we can them? put an end to this absurdity that we currently see on the battlefield that leads to the types of atrocities that we have saw on this clip at the beginning of this debate. We're we have failed yeah. miserably. We're going to move to run. You can herd cats, we've been doing it for years. <laughs> you can't herd cats. Yes, you can. I've tried. Yeah. You give them something they want and they follow you right to the bowl of milk. You know, um, I think it's clear that we are struggling now with sins of gradualism, of compromise that have led to corruption. A corruption, in some ways, in our national character. And I think what we're dealing with now is a crisis of our national character. And as soon as you say the word character, I think many of you um, probably would say, well, there's that great quote, 
uh, from Ralph Waldo Emerson. I, I think it is one of the finest things an American has said because it's important not just for each of us as individuals. It's important for us as a nation. Um, and it's just a few, uh, few sentences. Sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny. That's who we are. And we just got to get back to that however, however we can. You know, in the last book I wrote, uh, The Way of the World, uh, I wrestled with these issues of how we get back to the sunlight. And there was one character that struck me in the book, a woman named Wendy Chamberlain. You know, in certain periods in history, some people are just at all the, the crossroads moments, all the flashpoints. She was. She was our ambassador to Pakistan uh, during 9-11. Uh, she then moved uh, after that, after having some tough negotiations with Michelle.